This iconic scene from the horror movie Scream explains it all. Horror movies tend to follow the same stereotypical pattern when it comes to the role of genders. In most movies, women are portrayed as a damsel in distress as they are helpless, causing their life to be threatened. If there's a group of women being threatened, it is more likely that the virgin will be saved from the group. If a woman is not portrayed as helpful and is given power, then she most likely abuses this power, such as in the film Carrie. In the first horror films, this was the case, but nowadays some films are including ideals of feminism. Let's just focus on the first stereotype for now. In the novel Studying the Media, an introduction by Tim O'Sullivan, it explains how women are usually dumb blondes with a seductive voice and strong makeup. This stereotype has been prevalent since the beginning of horror films. Before women had no equal rights, they were often portrayed as weak. Therefore, the reality of the equality pr problems were reflected in films, including the horror genre. While women have continued to gain more rights and achieve equality in American culture, women have continued to be deprived of their equality in the film world. Foreign films, on the other hand, stay away from the stereotype as women are given more power and are equal to men. One of the most famous films in horror history is the film Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock is known for displaying the issue of equality, as usually he often incorporates teaching women lessons for their wrongdoings. This film displays the stereotype periodically throughout the film, as a psycho killer murders any woman who comes alone to his motel. This scene shows the murder of his first victim. Show scene. As you can see, the murderer is shown as a woman, but later in the plotline, the audience discovers that it is Norman Bates who is the killer. Therefore, Norma Bates is a mysterious man-killer who is superior to the woman as she has just committed a crime. In this instance, she has stolen money from the company she worked at and now is on the run. She fits the stereotype perfectly because she has sinned a great deal. Also, she is a blonde and clothes in a seductive way. Therefore, to follow the stereotypical pattern, Bates murders her in this iconic scene. You witnessed earlier Norman Bates dressed as a woman in the shot. He does this to hide under the mask of a woman because, in his mind, they are the only ones who can sin. As a male, he believes that he is pure and therefore he has pure thought, which explains why he also believes his mother is the only one who could have committed those murders. This film presents slight differences from the typical pattern, but brings in the idea of feminism still. Men are considered to have more power and be more pure than women because females commit awful deeds. Therefore, more likely than not, when the male murders the woman, the audience does not have much sympathy with her. As time progressed, this repetitive pattern of male superiority and stereotype of woman did as well. While there is still a, this clear pattern present, feminist elements began to arise in some films. The American stereotype is so prevalent in the movie Scream, directed by Wes Cravern. Clip. Here, Casey Backard, played by Drew Barrymore, is murdered by a sus suspicious character in a mask. Later in the film, the audience discovers that the killers were actually two teenage, two teenage boys. Casey is a stereotype for a typical female that would be placed in a horror film. While she runs and tries to fight back against the masked character, she is off overall portrayed as weak and unable to defend herself. On the other hand, the other sex is usually the hero or the monster and is shown as strong and unstoppable. The mystery character is a monster as he's a murderer. This is a reference to the hero on the scene. While Casey is talking on the phone, she mentions that her boyfriend is coming over. It is not mentioned if the boyfriend is real or not as she is shortly murdered afterward, but that figure still represents a male hero. If the boyfriend was real, real, he would be the only one who would be able to save her from the other man. Again, this is portrayed later in the movie. Here is a scene of another murder. Clip. This defends the idea that girls who are usually sinful tend to die more. Tatum Riley dies while retrieving beer for her friends. Therefore... While she's committing a crime, drinking and giving alcohol to teenagers who are under the age of 21. Because she's performed this act, her death was predictable and she was murdered while she was retrieving the beer. Again, this is the idea that Tatum Riley is a stereotypical helpless woman 
and the killer is a man. These elements are shown throughout the film history. While some films break the stereotype, there are usually some, still some factors that become apparent through costume design or the positions of the actors. In the novel, Men, Women, and Chainsaws by Carol J. Clover, it also gives a perspective on the type of setup of horse films. The author says, the functions of the monster and the hero are far more frequently represented by males and the function of the victim, far more garnishly by females. The fact that female monsters and female heroes, when they do appear, are masculine in dress and behavior and often in name, and that male victims are shown more in feminine postures at the moment of their extremity. Therefore, even when some roles are reversed, there is still some elements of the original horror film stereotypes. These masculine costume designs portrayed on females are also apparent in the film screen. Show clip. Gail the reporter in this clip says Cindy in the very end. That's right, the hero was not the man. Gail, however, is positioned and dressed to reflect more masculinity. She was wearing a heavy trench coat and she was wearing absolutely no makeup. She is also standing in a position where her shoulders are back and her feet are spread apart. This was intentionally done to give her more of a masculine stance. While there are definite signs of female deferiority, there is also signs of growth of feminism. At the end of the 20th century, the following pattern began to arise as shown by the novel Mad Woman and Chainsaws. The author states, a psycho killer who slashes to death a string of mostly female victims, one by one until they are subdued or killed, usually by the one girl who has survived. Sydney is the last remaining girl after the rampage of murders. The ending scenes in which she kills the two teenage murderers supports this ideal. This scene symbolizes power and the ability to protect herself. Before this time, women would have never been seen as superior to a male. Gail Weathers was thus first shown as a woman who only wanted the story, but the plot but as the plot evolved, so did she. Towards the end, her vulnerability was portrayed as strained. She cries at the death of the cop she's in love with, but chooses to live rather than dwell in the pain. This shows how women have, are no longer damsels in distress, but can stand out and defend themselves. While Screams has some stereotypes, as the film continued, it evolved into the more modern-day horror genre as it included fem feminism rather than male superiority. Compared to American films, the Japanese horror genre includes feminism throughout all history. In the field, Kwaidan produced the same year as Psycho. Women are shown equal to men, as there are no stereotypes centered around the two sexes. Show clip. This scene portrays how women and men switch roles. Women in American films tend to to play the victim, but here she is the villain. She kills the men who have lost their way and did not prepare. Because of their ability to prepare for the long journey, the price they were forced to pay was their lives. This reverses in Psycho as the man is punishing the woman for their sins. Women have been regarded with more rights in horror films, at least compared to American culture. This next scene also describes the reversal of roles in a Japanese film. Show clip. In this scene, the woman, the woman has, is murdering the man. He has lost his way in a blizzard, but this was intentional as well. The reason he has lost his way is because he is destined to be killed because of his sins. He married a second wife for money and power. After many years, he leaves her for his first wife. To his poor opinion and respect for his wives, he is killed. This relates to the sins also described in Psycho and Scream. Normally, it occurs when women have sinned, but here the gender roles are again reversed. This symbolizes, symbolizes the differences in gender roles in horror films. This film follows the tale of an ancient story told in Japan. It described how women could return to Earth to get revenge on their living if they had experienced a violent, unfair death. In the previous scene, the other man was allowed to win because he had not yet committed a devastating sin. The deal the woman made with him through was broken later in the film, causing his death. He dies again because he made a promise and broke it. Many people believed that this was portrayed in horror films because it was believed that women could hold power in death, but not in life. 
Therefore, while women did not have rights in their actual country, horror films that were based on old tales did display this theme. This is portraying how women's rights increased after they died. There is also a theory that states women act the way they do because they are parallel with the unpredictable world. Therefore, they tend to act more violently because they are there are many natural storms in other cases that causes deaths or weaknesses. This differs in American films as any problems that arise are usually blamed on the mother. This is because the mo- a mother is in charge of raising her child properly in order to protect them in the outside world. The Japanese do not use this finger pointing pattern and focus on the broader issues. In conclusion, films in the United States evolved over several decades to introduce the idea of feminism. This differs from films in Japan as they introduce a strong female role in most of their horror movies. American films in the beginning portray women as a stereotype. These women were typically blonde and were victims of a psycho killer or other forces. As time progressed, women began to gain more leads in films, but the stereotype has continued. Nowadays, if women are given a strong female lead, there are more masculine elements worked into their character. This differs in Japanese films, as women have always been given strong female leads. While they tend to not have much power outside of the home, they are given power in films. Many times, the gender roles are reversed. This, time, this is due for the variety of reasons. Sometimes it is based off novels written in other cases. Women are given rights because of their characters are deceased. Overall, in Japanese films, women are given rights in the afterlife. Japanese f- films tend to disregard the stereotypical horror film pattern that Western culture has adopted. This has been Alison Murphy on Feminism in Horror Films.